Harry Frankfurt is a highly regarded philosopher. He's most famous for, he's most well known for this article that he wrote called Al Alternate Possibilities and More Responsibility, which was published in the Journal of Philosophy in 1969. He has said that he almost regrets uh, publishing this because it's uh, the, been the basis for so much literature following it. And he's really more interested in other kinds of things. In any case, it is an extremely influential article. So that's why we're looking at it. The issue of the article. Now, Frankfurt used the, uses the word alternate. Peter Van Inwagen appropriately points out that this should be alternative. Uh, the word use is incorrect there. But so that's what we're going to use principle of alternative possibilities. And Frankfurt argues that this principle is false. This PAP principle is false. So what is the principle? Let's make sure that we're really clear on that. A person is morally responsible for what he has done only if he could have done otherwise. And this is how Frankfurt expresses it. As I said, so much literature follows this that it is uh, there are many, many versions of this, but this is the version that Frankfurt is concerned about. It seems very reasonable. It's the kind of thing that a libertarian would affirm. It makes sense. You shouldn't be held morally responsible if you couldn't have done anything but what you did, right? It, it seems like, say, a person who's carrying something very expensive and has an epileptic seizure and they didn't even know that this was a possibility at the time and they drop it and they break it, well, they couldn't have done otherwise but drop it. So we don't hold that person morally responsible. As Again, as long as we know that they didn't expect to have one, they've never had one before, those kinds of things fill in the details. So we don't hold such a person morally responsible. It seems that this is the reason why we only hold people morally responsible when they could have done otherwise. So this is a plausible principle. And Frankfurt goes on to argue that, look, there are situations in which a person may do something that leaves him no alternative to doing it, yet without those circumstances actually causing him to do it. There are forces that prevent the alternative from being taken, and yet they do A, and so they had no alternative, so they're responsible for doing A. In that, per in that situation, a person's morally responsible for their actions, but had no alternative possible actions. That's the general idea. This is how Frankfurt approaches it. He, he illustrates this with a few steps up to his main counterexample. And that's what his goal is, right? To provide a counterexample for this important thesis, this principle of alternative possibility. So here's the idea. Jones has made up his mind to do an action A. Now, later uh, we find that maybe Jones is uh, planning to commit an assassination. So he's attempting to kill Smith, right? That, that's what he's thinking of doing. He makes up his mind he's going to kill Smith, but then someone who wants him to do A, and not even knowing that Jones was planning to do it, threatens him so that he will do A. Okay, here's a, a few uh, possibilities now. Maybe Jones is the kind of person who's irrationally resistant to threats. And so it seems like that alternatives remain. And so this is not going to work as a counterexample, right? Jones uh, might be threatened with his own life. Somebody might threaten to cut off his foot. And Jones, I don't care. I'm going to kill Smith anyway. Sorry for the those graphic details. That's kind of illustrations, unfortunately, philosophers have often used. And so it looks like if Jones won, you know, that particular person, if they're irrationally resistant to threats, this is not a counterexample. So Frankfurt tries again, but then he contemplates the possibility that we have a Jones version two, who is hypersensitive to threats, right? The opposite of one. 
forgets his initial intent and acts only due to the threat. So that seems to be a person who lacks moral responsibility because their action is caused by the threat. So that doesn't seem to be a counterexample to the principle either. And then not finally, but seemingly a, a reasonable counterexample in Frankfurt's eyes, we have Jones three, who acts due to his original intent to act, but would have acted that way due to the threat imposed on him anyway. Now that seems to be a counterexample, says Frankfurt, to the principle of alternative possibilities. Again, remember the principle is a person is morally responsible for what he has done only if he could have done it otherwise. Here it seems like Jones did the action but could not have done otherwise because he would have acted that way, taken that action due to the threat. Now the threat wasn't there, but he did the original action. So that seems to be a counterexample. Now Frankfurt re recognizes that, well, some people may not be convinced. And so we get what we have come to call the Frankfurt case. And this is the, the one for any doubters. And this is uh, Jones four, version four of Jones. And this is a little bit intricate. So I'm going to go ahead and include all the details here on the screen uh, so here's the idea. Consider Black. Black wants Jones to do X. He wants Smith to be assassinated. But Black doesn't want to reveal his intentions. He doesn't want to be involved if he doesn't have to. Now, Black actually knows that Jones is thinking about doing this. And so he's going to wait until Jones is deciding about whether to follow through, deciding about whether to do X, and Black's going to do nothing unless it's absolutely clear that Jones won't do X. So if Jones is going to decide not to do X, then Black's going to intervene, right? Then Black will take steps to ensure that Jones commits the action. So whatever Jones is inclined toward, Black will have his way, right? Black's going to win, right? Smith is going to get assassinated either way. But now suppose Black does nothing, doesn't have to, Jones does the action on his own. And Jones initiated doing X. It seems like he's morally responsible for doing X. It was his idea, his planning, his action. No other cause caused him to do it. And yet he could not have done otherwise because he would have done the same thing had he decided not to, Black would have intervened, cause him to do the same thing. So it seems that the principle of alternative possibilities is false. So Frankfurt is convinced that's the primary argument. Frankfurt says that, that here's the problem with the principle of alternative possibilities. The problem is that it claims a person may be excused for performing an action if there are circumstances that made it impossible to avoid performing it, even if those circumstances in no way brought it about that he performed the action, right? Even if they didn't do anything in relation to the action. And that just doesn't seem right, according to Frankfurt. And so that's the issue. Now, we do want to note that there are certain possibilities, and this is something that uh, nearly anyone would agree with. There are cases of overdetermination, right? Uh, metaphysicians who work on causation talk about overdetermination all the, kind, all the time. And these are cases when there are two or more different causal chains leading up to an event, and any of the causal chains would be sufficient for the event. So the event's going to happen you can identify two different causes leading to the event. We often oversimplify causation in the way we talk about causation. One thing causes another thing when usually there are multiple factors uh, behind a cause. And that's a, a, another video for another time. But let's think about this possibility. So suppose there are two assassins, they both fire guns at exactly the same time they have, there's a simultaneous gunshot to the heart and to the brainstem, 
and the person, of course, dies. Uh, you take away either one of those, the person would have been killed by a gunshot. And so that's over determination. Uh, here's another case, maybe not so uh, gruesome, right? <laughs> Being clearly the most qualified for a position and also offering an irresistible bribe for the position. position. So there, either one would have gotten the person the position. The person's clearly the most qualified, so they would have got it without the bribe. And it wouldn't matter how qualified they were, they would have got it with the bribe. And so both of those were sufficient to bring about getting the position. That's overdetermination. And it seems like we could have situations of overdetermination. Now, let's uh, close this part one here. In part two, what we're going to do is consider a revised version of the principle of alternative possibilities and then look at why Frankfurt thinks the revisions also fail, and then talk about the significance of the article. Why is this such an important article in the history of, of philosophy and discussions of free will and moral responsibility?